Okay, this is a bit of an introduction to cell structure and in this topic you will be studying three different sorts of cell types. They're actually, they're not really cell types because as we're going to see, one of them isn't a cell at all. Um, cells are the smallest unit of uh, an organism. Uh, so all organisms are made up of cells. Obviously some have only got one cell, they're called unicellular organisms, meaning one cell. And uh, other organisms are multicellular, that means they've got loads of them. So we've got millions and millions and millions of cells as humans and we are multicellular. <coughs> and some organisms, those cell there's different cell types and they're organised into tissues to do different functions. Um, in, in really big organisms like ourselves, some of those tissues are built up to form structures called organs that do uh, different functions within the uh, organism. But we're just going to look at the sort of cell bit for the moment. So we have three basic models of organism cells. We've got eukaryotes, uh, prokaryotes and akaryotes. So eu is a, a prefix that is from the Greek and it means true. And when we're talking about a karyotype, you're talking about sort of chromosomes really. So your karyotype is your um, 46 chromosomes lined up. So this is kind of true chromosomes and the name is, um, is obviously from quite olden times. Um, and really what they were saying is we can see a nucleus. When we look at this cell, we can see a nucleus. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a plant cell, an animal cell, a fungal cell. What we can see is a big dark staining blob. It's embedded in the cytoplasm and surrounded by a membrane. So now I'm just going to tighten up that definition to cells that have a membrane bound. nucleus. In addition, when now that we've got more advanced microscopy techniques, we've also noticed that there are a number of compartments inside eukaryotic cells to do particular functions and one that you will have come across um, I think at school would be the chloroplast, uh, which is a little membrane bound bit of the cytoplasm to separate out the reactions of photosynthesis. You may have come across mitochondria which are a little bit smaller which carry out the reactions of respiration and kind of most of the rest of this topic is going to be concerned with all the different membrane compartments uh, inside a eukaryotic cell, what they look like and what they do. Examples of eukaryotes, we've got all of the animals, so we're talking about animal cells, we're talking about plant cells, we're talking about fungal cells, and we talk about another sort of quite obscure group of unicellular organisms without any tissues. Um, so they're either unicellular or like seaweeds, multicellular but with no tissues called the protoctista. Wow, what a word. Protoctista. Lovely. So in contrast to the eukaryotes, these things with true chromosomes and a membrane bound, held in a membrane bound nucleus, was the next sort of cell to be discovered, again with more advanced microscopy techniques, um, and needed because they're only about the same size as these little membrane bound compartments or organelles are the prokaryotes, so these are smaller and they do not have a membrane bound nucleus. Instead, they still have DNA, it's just it's it's just floating about free in the cytoplasm in an area called the nucleoid. So the nucleoid is free DNA in the cytoplasm. No, I can't spell cytoplasm. 
Now there are some other differences as well that we'll look at in a later video. This is just an introduction. Now prokaryotes, we need to think bacteria. And again, you know, in module two, uh, so after Christmas we'll be looking at different sorts of bacteria. Um, so we'll be looking at the archaea domain and the prokaryote domain. And then we've got the akaryote. Now a is a prefix. So pro means sort of before, if you like. So this, the, the sort of original idea was, yeah, okay. So before we had a proper nucleus, perhaps our, the DNA was just sort of floating free in the cytoplasm. So this is kind of pre-nucleus. A as a prefix means no. So these are not cellular things. These have no nucleus at all. And we're really only talking about viruses, which are pretty much on the edge of life and non-life. And these are not cellular. What they are is um, a nucleic acid. And they're not even fussy about which one they use. They'll use DNA or RNA. Plus, that's all wrapped up in a protein coat. So... That's pretty much what a virus is. For all their sort of devastating impacts, they are just a nucleic acid enveloped in a protein coat. No cells at all. Okay.